In the 21st century, the world is at our fingertips, enabling us to just pick up a suitcase and travel with no questions asked. Just a couple of clicks online and we're transported across the world to one of the must-see places promoted by the tourism industry. But with a few clicks of the thumb on social media, we can be discouraged from visiting some of the legendary destinations. When it comes to legends, the archipelago of Mayotte harbors many behind its double barrier reef. But at 8,000 kilometers from Paris, France's 101st department breaks all the records when it comes to poverty, insecurity, and immigration. Amplified by social media, the idyllic setting has become a turnoff for tourists. And yet, the lagoon island nestled in the Mozambique Channel between Africa and Madagascar continues to attract people who have children and turtles which lay eggs. To understand, let's head behind the scenes. Let's embark on a different sort of journey. Mayotte is still in El Dorado. What's really special about it is the double coral reef barrier, which makes Mayotte a remarkable diving location, especially since it's protected from mass tourism. When I came to Mayotte, I was immediately hooked. I saw the color of the lagoon, that turquoise blue like you expect in Bali or the Maldives. Then I landed, and not 200 meters from the airport, I saw heaps of garbage. It broke my heart, and I thought, no, something has to be done. You can't throw trash just anywhere. People are out of control. If there aren't any sanctions, they'll keep doing the same stupid things. Everyone needs to work together to clean up Mayotte. Otherwise, it's a complete mess. Abîme pas la nature parce que demain tes enfants voudront de cette nature. N'abîme surtout pas la nature. Nature, 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 nature. N'abîme pas la nature. N'abîme pas la nature parce que demain tes enfants voudront la nature pour eux. Most people go to the beach for picnics on weekends. When turtles get killed, they almost think it's funny. Honestly, it practically makes them laugh to see whales, dolphins, or turtles get killed. In Mayotte, more and more children have something in common with the baby turtles. They lead a free-wheeling existence, with insecurity exacerbated by poverty and remoteness. At first glance, it's hard to imagine that this is France. I don't distinguish between the environmental and social problem. For me, they go hand in hand. Nobody cares about poverty in the Bangas. The fact that one third of the population has no access to drinking water honestly doesn't bother them. In addition to poverty is violence, showcased by recurring teenage murders by rival gangs outside high schools. Mayotte's young people flocked to the streets after one of their own, 17-year-old Mickey, was killed. With a succession of protest marches, they demand the right to study in peace. In Mayotte, half the population is under 18 years old. I don't feel safe at all at school because I think maybe they'll attack today, maybe tomorrow. I'm not afraid for myself, but I'm afraid for my students. Young people who aren't from here come and terrorize our students. It's really hard for me because I feel helpless. In 
You feel the rise in violence over the last two years. Actually, we're now armed like never before. Throughout the small French island redolent of Africa, you often hear things used to be better. The memory of an easygoing way of life that Mahorans hope to ensure by overwhelmingly voting to remain French. On March 31, 2011, Mayotte broke off from the rest of the Comoros and became a French department, giving France a strategic military base in the Indian Ocean, as well as the promise of gas resources in the Mozambique Channel. I'm from Mayotte, and when I was young, say 17, we all basically knew each other. There was just one high school and one middle school. Everyone knew each other. And we all shared the same joy and desire of belonging to Mayotte. Back in those days, Mayotte had an innocent, carefree way of life. Simple things brought people happiness. It was utopic. When I talk about that, my son goes, cut it out, Dad, stop making things up. Yet it wasn't even 50 years ago. Peace, sharing and solidarity. Those are the three cornerstones that make Maroons who they are. And this mustn't be ruined because of the new people arriving here. In Mayotte, becoming a French department turned foreigners into a personal enemy and made these traditional fishing boats, called Kwasa Kwasa, secret vessels of hope. Officially, 48% of Mayotte's population comes from elsewhere, mainly the Comoros. The establishment of a visa that ended free movement between the Comoro Islands put up a seawall between Mayotte and the rest of its cradle of identity. Personally, I came to Mayotte because my life in the Comoros wasn't the life I wanted. My life was already ruined. We spent 36 hours on the water. The sea was very rough, and we were scared. But when we set out, nobody cared about that. Whatever will be, will be. At least we were on our way to Mayotte. This is how you come to Mayotte. But when you get off the boat, you take off all your clothes and you throw them away. You get different ones so you don't attract the police's attention when they see you on the street. Look, that guy's got sand on his feet and his clothes are wet. They might think, that's a newly arrived illegal immigrant and we need to catch him. No matter what subject you broach in Mayotte, whether it's health, education, security, housing, within minutes or even seconds, the conversation zeroes in on immigration. For me, it's hard to imagine that when someone who is hurting and who is at the end of their rope washes up on a beach in Mayotte, people will gather there to prevent the medical helicopter from coming to rescue them. In 2019 alone, 27,000 migrants were deported from Mayotte, compared to 24,000 in mainland France. The Minister of the Interior even created a deputy prefect position purposely to fight illegal immigration, a task entrusted to a woman assisted by the GAO, a special police unit that is also unique to France. Today, they want to show us the environmental impact of overpopulation in Mayotte, which immigration directly contributes to. What you need to imagine when you see corrugated sheet metal is that there could be an entire village behind it. 
Here you see there are both concrete edifices, which doesn't necessarily mean they're legal, and also sheet metal shacks. In other words, completely informal dwellings that don't necessarily have access to water and electricity, not to mention garbage collection and waste removal. This is the kind of unauthorized dump, one of many, that you find in Mayotte. This is how one of the impacts of uncontrolled immigration manifests, garbage piling up in informal districts, and with heavy rains, the waste winds up in the lagoon and pollutes the soil and the rich environment of the lagoon all around Mayotte. The image speaks for itself and says more than I can about the impact of demographic and migratory pressure in Mayotte in relation to the rate at which public infrastructures are being developed. There is a structural problem in Mayotte, it's true. In other words, the facilities were all designed for a population of 80 to 100,000 people. And I ask myself what size population is advisable in Mayotte and for what sort of development. That debate is not really happening. I'd like for it to be. I'm more at ease than others and the rector as well. In other words, our international commitments and epidemiological knowledge allow us to affirm that germs aren't going to distinguish between people with papers and people without. That's a position elected officials can understand. Yet at the same time, when we talk about improving health care, some of them say that will be a pull factor for Comoros. It's tough. It really is. Obviously, people's intention to integrate factors into their request for papers. If you want your situation legalized and you want to stay in Mayotte, integrate. Look after Mayotte as you would your own home. It doesn't guarantee you'll get papers, but it could help. On the other hand, all those who get sucked into a spiral of violence, whether they have papers or not, are destined to return to the country they came from. In addition to the action of the Gao Special Unit, the armed branch in the fight against illegal immigration in Mayotte, a lot of Maoran villages have set up their own security system. Here, Islam is practiced by 95% of the population, and Muslim law is applied in part. Fundis, the teachers at Quranic schools, are still highly respected. In Imsamundu, in the south of the island, Ali Mohammed is the son of one of them. He used his influence to create the ASMV, an association for village security. Since 2016, the ASMV has worked with police to lower delinquency, and gradually it has also become an association that helps preserve the environment, which has led about 30 cleanup operations on beaches and rivers. For forest ranger Ali Mohammed, the preservation of people in nature, Ulanga in the Shimaro language, is the same fight. feels making a natural reserve out of the 3,000 hectares of forest, with its wildlife such as insect-eating bats and emblematic lemurs, is not enough. He is adamant about preserving his island and its endemic species. This tree is called a namuluna. It's found nowhere else in the world. It only grows here in Mayotte and in our village. It's our heritage a symbol of the Maoran biodiversity that Ali Mohammed spreads awareness about. Often in the media or on Facebook, you only ever hear bad things about Mayotte. That hurts. That makes me feel bad. I'm Mahoran. I was born in Mayotte and I love my island. I really want something to change here. Because right now, it's not good at all. If we respect our environment and clean up our village and beaches, it will draw tourists. You see, here in Samundu, we often clean up between Grand Sazile to Samundu. Each weekend, there are lots of tourists. And when they come here, they see the beaches clean. It makes them happy. 
They're happy and we're happy too. So that's a good thing. It brings money to our island. But if it's dirty and bad, nobody likes that. See there? That's Crocodile Point. There's what we call spirits there. We have a Sazile story about how one rainy season it didn't rain. All the villagers went there to celebrate the Muslim holiday. This holiday is called Maulida Shenge. And so the village elders brought zibu meat and milk all the way to the point, and they offered it to the spirits. Seismic activity in Mayotte and the surprise emergence of a new underwater volcano in 2020 has fueled these legends and the ambivalent relationship Maorans have with the sea. It is a constant source of both wonder and fear. Maybe if we dig far enough into our collective consciousness, we'll see it's linked to the time when pirate ships came to Mayotte, because it was very hard to navigate into the lagoon, and there were lots of shipwrecks. Many people died. Maybe that's what also gave Mayotte its name, El Maut, which means death in Arabic. An imagination fueled also by the number of illegal migrants claimed by the sea between Mayotte and the Comoros. 12,000 people have died while crossing in the past 15 years. Ali Mohamed, assisted by French mainlanders like Sami, tried to draw environmental benefit from this global tragedy. 80% of the volunteers in his association, backed by the NGO Sea Shepherd, are undocumented migrants. You have to see things positively. Those who come here always have something to offer. What can they contribute? That's up to us to find out how we can move forward with them. They want recognition. In other words, when they come here, they're illegals, exploitable labor. But they want to show that they can integrate and bring something positive to Mayotte and contribute to the island's development. I think that's why they joined the association. Several nights a week at sundown, members of the ASMV go by boat, or more often on foot to the beaches of Sazile, where sea turtles nest to lay eggs, making it a hot spot for poachers. In Mayotte, 3,000 sea turtles make their way here against all odds year long, a boon for a market where their meat fetches up to 50 euros a kilo. Not a night goes by that a poacher isn't driven by poverty to come slaughter this symbolic creature of Mayotte a crime punishable by a three-year jail sentence and a 150,000 euro fine. But all too often, those pulling the strings go unpunished. They attack its neck. They turn it over and remove the plastron. What you see there, then they empty it, they clean it out and leave the shell turned over with the head just hanging there. I've heard that sometimes they don't even kill the turtle. Some cut it open alive and just take the meat. They don't even bother to kill it first. That's just cruel. It's a shame. They can't just stand by while other people try to destroy the environment. I can't simply do nothing, because it's our heritage, the heritage of Mayotte. We need to protect it. We can't simply leave it. It's a cause we share. And by spending time together, you realize we aren't really that different. You hear so much about how the Anjouans and Comorians are like this or that. They're mean, they try to rob you. But in all the time I spent with them, I've never felt unsafe. I see they have qualities, despite the situation, they do everything they can to preserve this. I think that's good. I like spending time with them because there's always something to talk about. You learn a lot. 
par exemple. Like what? Bah, Well, for instance, how the Comorians in Mayotte live. Take myself, for example. I'm from France, and we've got our own little life. I go to my school each day. But I don't know how the illegals or undocumented migrants live, how they find jobs, how they avoid the border police. We don't know anything about those things. And when I talk to him, I discover what life's like for them each day. For example, the fact they can't sleep a whole night through, They sleep a little, then have to wake up to check if the border police are coming. Then they sleep a little bit more. They take turns doing that. For me, he's a brother that God has sent me. When he's with me, things go well. Two members of the association who broke curfew in order to protect turtles from the upsurge in poaching during the lockdown were arrested and deported to the Comoros. In Mayotte, like everywhere on the planet, environmental responsibility begins at school. Near the largest shanty town in France, the vocational school of Kaweni looks like a green lung. Sarah, a young teacher from Reunion Island, adds a little ecology to each of her French and history geography classes. Reunion is really one single island, while Mayotte is an archipelago, so there are several different islets. We even have a much richer lagoon, which is one of the most beautiful diving locations in the world. The water is turquoise, the local people are adorable, we've got a huge range of different colors, a huge number of protected species and endemic species, a huge number of turtles. The interior of the island has very lush vegetation because we have a very humid tropical climate. In short, we have everything. I think that compared to Reunion Island, Mayotte is much less urbanized, which makes it extremely beautiful and unspoiled. I know I still have students with no access to drinking water and have to fetch it from springs. They don't have electricity either. We also have students who sometimes have to catch the bus very early in the morning. They wake up at 3.30 a.m. to catch the 5 o'clock bus, they come to school and don't eat, because actually there's no cafeteria in the schools. They're allowed a snack, but it's just a small sandwich, and in fact it's not a given. So we're talking about students who've been up since 3.30 in the morning and won't eat until they get back home at 7 p.m. What animal do we have in Mayotte that regularly comes up to the beach to lay eggs? Turtles. We've got a countless number of turtles that come to lay eggs. So imagine a little turtle, whether it's still a baby or a mama or a papa turtle. Is it possible for them to survive when there's litter around? Plastic bags. Have you ever seen those pictures? What happens to the turtles? They eat the bags. They eat the bags. Okay, so we can prevent that simply by not littering the mangroves or the lagoon. Where should we throw our trash then? Into the sea. Najizin. <laughs> That's exactly what you shouldn't do. Yes, you need to throw it in the sea. Actually, Najizin, This is 2021, and we're trying as hard as possible to change this way of thinking. In Mayotte, the sea is what feeds you. What's going to happen if you no longer have anything to eat? Well, there's chickens. It's the same thing for chickens. What are they going to eat if there's nothing but plastic bottles on the ground? If you destroy your environment, in the end, you're going to destroy yourself. It's a chain reaction that will turn against you at some point. Do you realize that Mayotte is a pearl in the Indian Ocean? It's beautiful. Do you remember the field trip we took in the boat last December? What color was the water? Turquoise blue, blue like the sky. It was gorgeous, remember? We took lots of pictures. Was there any litter? 
No. You can tell they're proud of their island, and that's something I find quite moving. They're aware of the problems we have in Mayotte, but they're also aware of the beauty of their island. I think of Hakim, who already told me, I'm never leaving the Bangas. I'm going to stay in Kawini my whole life. I love my island. Then there's Ahmed, who tells me every day, Mayotte is the most beautiful island. I'm proud to say I'm from Mayotte. Their love for their island isn't lessened by all the insecurity they feel. And I believe this is the generation who's going to save us. If everyone started cleaning up the beaches on a regular basis, and beyond that, if they would stop littering, can you imagine what that would mean if all the beaches in Mayotte were spotless? They'd be gorgeous. And that's an asset for you too. It's not just an asset for the environment. It's also one for you because it means at the weekend you can go to these amazing beaches. It also means there'll be more people who want to come to Mayotte. Remind me what sector you're in? Hospitality and food service. That means lots of tourists. Do we agree? But are tourists going to come and swim in garbage? No. Ahmed, Hakim, and the students of Sarah's class take us on one of their favorite field trips not far from the school to clean the mangrove. Washed by the tides, these ecological niches, characteristic of human zones, are privileged places for wildlife to reproduce and grow up safe from predators. They're also carbon sinks necessary for fighting global warming. When you find litter or trash, put it in your bag, okay? Does everybody have their bag? But a mangrove also reflects the failures of the environmental engagement of a country and its citizens. The litter thrown along the side of the roads winds up in the ocean. Oh, no. Why didn't I bring my shoes? A crab! Hakim, a hermit crab! Look at these little animals. We're dealing with a rare ecosystem that needs to be preserved because we're talking about trees that are temperamental and need the right level of salt water and at the same time temperatures that are neither too hot nor too cold. That gives us one of the most beautiful mangroves in the world. Why didn't we bring all the students? My bag is already full. We've been climbing trees since we were kids, when we were just knee high. Sometimes when I was little, I used to come swim here and I'd see litter. When I see all this, it makes me ashamed. I'm ashamed because this is my art. Mayotte is our island. We can't do this sort of thing. We have to be very careful. Here there's salt water, but mixed with pollution. The mangrove will be damaged little by little. After that, the risk is no more mangrove in Mayotte. These two teens, children of the turtle, have developed an ecological awareness without realizing it guided by the good sense of a teacher who loves their island. We wanted to understand where these young ambassadors of their lagoon island come from. Welcome to Kawini, part of the largest shanty town in France. Thirty thousand people live on the steep slopes of this informal town in corrugated metal shacks. 
Ahmed was born in the Comoros, but came to Mayotte when he was one year old. His brother, like many young people, lives in France today. Hakim was older when he came to Mayotte. Kawini is a huge tropical maze where the police refuse to set foot. But these two teens know every nook and cranny of it, not to mention its filth, lack of water and electricity, and all its dangers. This door needs to be fixed. This is my neighborhood. This is my home. And this is my family. They love to tell kids, go to school. School is good. If it's so good, how come parents stop going? <laughs> how do you feel at school here? Good? It's just that I want to improve myself for work so that I can get a job and take good care of my family. School and his mother, the two safeguards that keep Hakim, the eldest child in the single-parent household, from slipping into delinquency. I came here when I was nine in 2013. In Akwasa Kwasa. Those are the little boats, the pirogues we fish with. We have no choice. The situation is bad there. Mayotte has improved, but not the Comoros. It was like I was dead. It's very dangerous. It's a risk, a big risk, but one we had to take, because we had no choice. Hakim, like his brothers and sisters, stick close to their mother, who holds tight to the hope and help they represent. Thousands of children in Mayotte, victims of illegal immigration, grow up in groups in the Bangas without their parents, who get deported to Comoros, yet prefer to leave their children behind while waiting to try their luck once more. Tell me about your neighborhood in the Bangas of Kawini. For me, it represents sadness and shame. Do you understand that there are young people who become violent because of all that? Yes, I know. But that's because my mother raised me right. I'm never going to be like that. There are kids who become thugs because of that. But his mother did what she needed to do so they didn't become like the other kids. It's because she gives her children a lot of love. <laughs> Last year, during the rainy season, on one of the Congo slopes, the path people used to walk up to their bangers turned into a stream that contained dirty dishwater, human waste, to put it plainly, and mud. And people were barefoot in that because they'd take their sandals off so they wouldn't get stuck in the mud and washed away. I thought, what a challenge for these people. You see the absolute misery these people are living in. Then you see how the kids show up at school and they're clean, they're smiling. You know they haven't necessarily eaten that morning. And you think that in order for Mayotte to develop, these kids need to have breakfast and they need to get a good night's sleep. They need to not be living with eight to ten people in ten or twelve square meters. Practically half of the illnesses we see at the hospital or in health centers are linked to the environment. Of course, they're mainly infectious diseases and illnesses borne by mosquitoes, which proliferate with the degradation of the environment, stagnant water and the accumulation of trash. I think there's ignorance and perhaps a serious underestimation of the fact that this has a direct impact on health, and it can kill. It's complicated to talk about the environment. You can see it for yourself in the neighborhood up there that there's no way garbage trucks can get up there, so the inhabitants in the neighborhood have to throw their trash out wherever they can. It's tough to talk about the environment. 
Behind the scenes here in Mayotte, satellite dishes and cell phones contrast with the absence of water and sewage pipes. The image of the island broadcast to the world via television and social media is that of violence and the fear of foreigners. In the Bangas, it sows the seeds of frustration, which in turn fuels this very image. Associations such as Ali's Manga Tele attempt to break the vicious circle. We do everything we can to try to make the children understand that this is their future, and they mustn't do that or this because it tarnishes the images of our department. It's scary. It's scary when you see those images broadcast around the world. It's frightening, and it damages the image of our beautiful island. It puts a red X on France's new department, and that's not good. Ahmed and Hakim have agreed to step through the Mahoran looking glass with us. The south of Mayotte will give these children of the turtle reason to keep faith in their island. There's Mount Shingi. It's 594 meters high. It's really tall. For 17 years, naturalist Michel Charpentier, a retired teacher, has devoted his time to turtle conservation. Not a weekend goes by that he doesn't come camp here to study their life cycle in the peninsula of Sazile, one of their last remaining sanctuaries for turtles. Do turtles only come to Sazile? No, they go to all the beaches in the south. We need to protect them in Mayotte and all over the world. All over the world because they're endangered. But why do people eat turtles? There are people who say turtles have lots of vitamins. No, that's not true. Plus, they say they can heal illnesses. That's not true at all. There are people who eat turtles because they're considered a delicacy by a certain category of people in Mayotte. People with money because there are many folks who can afford to pay 50 or 60 euros for a kilo of meat. Have you ever eaten turtle? No. Mayotte Nature Environment above all aims at participatory science, blending militancy, ecotourism, camaraderie and curiosity. A dynamic which today draws students and recognition from public authorities. Although in 2010, Mayotte was named France's first overseas natural sea park, conservation remains an enormous challenge. This guy's dead. Poor turtle. That was poachers. While waiting for sundown, Hakim and Ahmed familiarized themselves with the immense lagoon, the third largest in the world a jewel that is protected by a double coral reef barrier 195 kilometers long that can reach depths of 70 meters. A sanctuary for countless water species, including whales, which from July to September make their way here with their young. Moments like today could help you start a new relationship with the sea? No. The trauma is too painful? Very painful. What could mend that? For me, it's work. Because if I work, my life will completely change. Ah, 
This is the first time I've come to Sazile and it's beautiful. I see myself working with nature and protecting nature. Because we can't just help out people, we must also help plants. Plants need us, nature needs us, the sea creatures need us. The trees give us oxygen, but that's not all. In Mayotte, we're also lucky to have a beautiful lagoon. There's a gorgeous lagoon, the water is gorgeous. People even come to Mayotte to see our lagoons. Reunion Island, which Marins consider something to aspire to, they think it's a goal to be like Reunion Island. Well, do you know how many turtles nest there? Whereas Reunion Island used to have a lot of turtles, now there are two turtles that nest in the air. Two. Here on the beach of Sazile alone, you can add three zeros to that. And on the entire island, multiply it by three or four. Those are the stakes I see for Mayotte's future. When I think about my future, it's simple. I hope that Mayotte won't be in the same state as now. That our children won't see Mayotte the way we did. That they'll see the lagoons are beautiful. And the mangrove is clean. And there's less pollution. That's our project. Do you plan to have several wives, a lot of children? How do you see all that? I care too much about my life for that. What do you mean? Several wives. One's already enough of a headache. To think two? We saw a turtle going down the secondary path. And there are tracks going up near the main path. And a bit farther near the start of the wet zone, there's a path there and back. Okay, okay we'll check it out. Thank you. Are the two boys with you? The two students? They're not with us. Eve says they're sleeping. <laughs> okay. Snug in their camp, the children of the turtle will dream about her before they actually see her. The weight adds to the excitement. Because their instinct drives them to return to where they hatched, to lay their eggs. Because the effort they make to evade predators demands respect. Because their longevity defies men's greed. For all these reasons, sea turtles fascinate us. For over 150 million years, they've climbed onto beaches to lay their eggs in the safety of the sand. Here you write, no eggs, N-E. This is a hot spot for turtle nesting. We need to justify the number of turtles that come up and go back and lay eggs to show that this zone is a critical nesting ground where a lot of turtles nest. Like we explained earlier about Reunion Island, where it's incredible when there are two nests. Whereas here tonight we're going to have... Already we have, what, five turtles who've come to lay eggs? So the idea is to gather the statistics to make an argument to turn this into a protected zone. Ideally, it would be a nature reserve. When we come here, we really do see the entire life cycle of the turtle. Coming onto the beach, nesting, hatching and mating in the sea. It's an amazing place. Zone 3, 9, 12 p.m. We're going to go see what she's up to. She's preparing her nest. She's digging her hole. The first large hole where she's half buried. Now, normally, she's busy digging her second hole, which is where she'll lay her eggs. The only time they're ever on land is when they come up to nest. And they do that three times a year and the most about 10 seasons in their lifetime. All by themselves, the baby turtles make their way back to the sea to survive against predators. And 20 years later, they instinctively know how to return here and nest. 
ce qu'il faut faire pour pondre. She's leaving. No, she didn't lay any eggs. One, two, three, four, five. On the beaches of Sazile, the tracks left by the turtles offer evidence of their nocturnal marathon to reproduce. The presence of naturalists discourages poachers. One turtle has waited for Hakim and Ahmed to wake up before laying her eggs. When she filled the hole back in, she uncovered a nest. Not real nice for the other turtle. I'm looking because there are tracks of hatchlings. So I'm looking for where they emerged from. About two months later, when its mother is already long gone, a tiny turtle, newly hatched and freshly emerged from the sand, makes its first sprint toward the sea. The first hours of a hatchling's life are a real challenge. Their goal is to reach the water without encountering a crab or a bird. <laughs> It's pretty surprising to see how much of the population knows there are turtles, but have never seen them. There's a huge effort to be made in terms of environmental education. I'm hopeful that with the Pact for Conserving the Turtles, we can do a better job and strike a balance between nature conservation and development in general. to the awareness-raising efforts of nature conservation associations, ecotourism in Mayotte is one of the best ways to fight against poverty. This eco-lodge, which seems to have sprung from the lagoon amid the trees, is expanding in a way that limits its environmental footprint. Nicolas Gégère initiates our two hospitality apprentices from Kawene into the virtues of eco-building. So here, we're building the hotel's extension with bungalows that look a lot like the ones we already have, but you see, more modern. The terrain doesn't adapt to us, we adapt to the terrain. You see, we use stilts, so that way we don't touch the ground. We set the building delicately on its foundation. Is the wood sustainable? It's sustainable wood, and wood has lots of advantages, lots. It's comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. That remains to be seen. Really? Yes, we'll see. It's ecological. Ecological, but not comfortable. One day I slept in a tree. I didn't find it very comfortable. Plus, we'll have a beautiful view. 
It's interesting because in a few years, as late as possible maybe, when we want to give this place back to the environment, we will have borrowed it for 30, 40, maybe 50 years, and we'll give it back. It'll be easy to do so because these buildings are reversible. We can easily remove them. I used to be able to do that. <laughs> See, guys, it's an assembly of wood. It fits together like Lego with lots of screws. This is the first time I've worked in a project like this. You can see it's ecological, something for the future, to develop my art. I'd like these two young men to get a good education, because in Mayot, young people tend to be idle and not amount to much. They drop out of school. We wouldn't need to call upon foreign companies to build in Mayot. We've got young people here who can do it. Mayotte looks to Europe for everything that appeals to modernity, everything that appeals to concrete, imported things that let us make a complete break from the Comoros and show we made the right decision by choosing France, because it gives us access to a certain number of comforts and things that are more modern. The children of migrants know better than anyone. When they aren't fatal, wood and the sea open the doors of freedom. Ahmed and Hakim's exceptional odyssey in the wake of the turtle is the story of two children who, like her, believed in their luck. In fact, on the day they went diving for the first time, she came to greet them.